So, how do you configure your Django or Python applications with Docker? Do you search on Google and copy and paste some code and put it on production? Well, certainly this is one way of doing it. Or I can give you some tips and save you from future headaches. Welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we are going to configure Django and Postgres with Docker. But the tips and tricks are useful if you have any Python projects. My name is Ali Company and in this channel we are talking about full stack programming and sometimes UI UX as well. If you like this kind of a stuff, uh, please watch to the end of the video and make sure to subscribe. First, we we'll start by configuring Django in the development environment. Obviously, you need to have Docker and Docker Compose on your system. If you don't have them, I put some links in the description. You can follow them and install Docker and Docker Compose. If you already have Docker on your system, let's jump right into it. This video is brought to you by Webcar Studio. If you need a landing page, CRM, or any web application, please contact us at hi at signwebcar.xyz. First, we need to set up our virtual environment. I'm using pipm for that. After that, let's install Django. And create our Django project. Because we should never put passwords or secret keys inside Docker's configurations, let's create an env file and put these variables inside it. In order to manage our environment variables, I'm using the Django environment package. First, we need to install it. After that, let's edit the settings.py file to read our environment variables. The next step is to create our custom Docker image. We need to decide which Python based image we are going to use. There are some people who suggest using Alpine, but because using Alpine could make our builds too slow and create some performance issues in the future, we are not using it. I put a link down in the description which explains in detail why it's better not to use Alpine. We are using Python version 3.8, uh, a slim buster, because it's a small and a stable enough compared to other base images. After that, uh, we are setting the work directory and let's uh, set these environment variables. The first one prevents Python from writing PYC files to disk. And the second one prevents Python from buffering std out and std error. After that, let's install our Python package uh, from pipenv. We also install Flake 8, uh, which uh, analyze our code for pep8 best practices. And finally, we copy our code to the Docker container. Docker caches the steps in Docker file to speed up builds. When a change is made to one step, all steps following will be redone. So it's better to start your Docker file with commands that are less likely to change and putting commands that are more likely to change, for example, like copy, as late as possible. After that, we run Flake 8 to see uh, Linter's suggestions. Next, we are creating a Docker Compose file. We are creating a service inside it for our uh, Django application. We called it web. Let's add a volume and uh, make port 8000 on the host machine uh, connected to port 8000 on uh, our Docker container. Now let's test to see uh, we didn't make any mistakes.
As you can see, everything is working. If we want Django to use Postgres, uh, we need to install PsychoPG, which is a Postgres adapter. Don't install PsychoPG binary on production. In order to use Postgres, we need to edit our Docker image. So we head to our Docker file and add these lines to it. Basically, uh, PsychoPG needs these uh, dependencies to work properly. Combine run steps that are related in order to prevent caching. Since each run step will create a new layer and using unnecessary disk space. After that, we need to add Postgres service inside the Docker Compose file. We call it db. To make sure that our database data doesn't remove each time we stop our container, let's create a volume for it. Now let's add these environment variables to env file. Okay, now we need to add a new environment variable for our database. After that, let's edit uh, settings.py file and tell Django we are using Postgres now. Now let's edit our Docker Compose file and make sure every time we run it, first we migrate changes. And let's build our containers again. Awesome, everything is working. In order to use Docker on production, we need to make some changes to our configurations. First, we need to install gunicorn package. After that, let's create a new Docker file and name it dockerfile.prod. Here we use a Docker multi-stage build to reduce the final image size. Essentially, we create a temporary image first, uh, we call it builder. This image is used for building the Python wheels. The wheels are then copied over to final production image and the builder image is discarded. The builder image is similar to the development image uh, which we created earlier, but for installing Python packages, we first extract packages from pipenv.log and create requirements.txt file. Then we are building Python wheels. After that, let's create our final production image. It's best practice to run our Django app with a non-root user. So let's create a new user and call it app. Next, we create uh, necessary directories and set the work directory as well. After that, we copy Python packages from the builder image. and copy our project inside the Docker image. After that, let's change ownership of all the files to the app user, then change to the app user. And finally, we need to create a new Docker Compose file and update the web service to build with uh, dockerfile.prod image and use gunicorn for running the server. Also, since uh, in production we don't need a volume, uh, let's remove it. Now let's run our production container to see if it's working. We add a dash f flag to tell Docker that we are using a new Docker com compose file. Awesome, it's working. You can also create an Nginx service for this setup, but usually I don't do this. Remember, Docker is another layer of complexity and it may cause more harm than benefit. Especially in production servers, we don't want that. 
I also put a link of uh, an article in the description which explains uh, why it's better not to use Nginx on a container. It's also advisable to not configure the database with, with Docker. There are many fully managed database services uh, like uh, RDS or uh, Cloud SQL. And rather than managing your own Postgres instance within a container, you should use them. I put GitHub link of this project down in the description. If you want to use it as a starter for your Django projects, you are more than welcome to use it. If you enjoyed this video and find it useful, please consider to subscribe to our channel. If you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. Until the next video, goodbye and have a nice day.